financial services for Microsoft. And uh, I say data is a new currency. And it is now, after seven years, we're now talking about data and AI. I, I would say a lot of people think that it's a hype. I remember in February, I was in India when we read the news and announced all of that. And since then, the entire week, you cannot finish a meeting without talking about generative AI. And I, I dress like this because I have to make a presentation in one of the conference room, talking to some of the C level and, and entire journey about how do I transform the company on AI. And I would say the initial wave when it is coming in February, everybody's thinking what it is and all of that. Today, if I ask you, I mean, every other day I have a presentation, a board meeting, whatever, you can name it in public speaking and all of that. Actually, our customers are coming to us and give me a list of use cases already. So it's not that I've been in The question is, how do I prioritize? How do I get started? So it's so real, and it's, it's more real than any technology that we've got. But in a nutshell, that's what I will I'll definitely come back to you because. Um, I think one of the key points is actually it's nothing new. AI has been around for quite a long time, yeah. but maybe just because of some of the breakthrough, um, especially to the from B to C side, a lot of people are you know from the media, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, picking this up. But um, we'll I'll, I'll, I'll come back to to talk about what is the turning point um, for, for these things. Now let's then jump over to this side um, because uh, you know if you need. Something develop very quickly as a, as a general phenomenon. It takes a lot of resources, and the key thing is about money. So, asking about the investment community, how do you see this, Alex? Uh, I'll keep it simple, right? Um, we have like buzzword every year, right? Last year was like metaverse. <laughs> we have Web three, we have blockchain, and it just still with metaverse. We have something called ICO. Of the gem. So for us, right, our job is to filter all this password and our investors will ask them, Alex, should I put my money in? So that, that's the kind of question that they don't care about. You know, we're asking, where are you putting your money in? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, for AI, I, I believe uh, for medium term, I'm asking a question. So for, for medium term, I think it is real because when I found that um, a lot of emails and messaging I'm receiving from other people, I actually don't check GPT. Mm. Yes. So that's real. People are actually using it. I mean, not from a like scientific point of view, but everyone is using it. I mean, if you cannot open a chat GPT account, you go to poe.com or somewhere, right? So people are using AI. Like even even someone like after this meeting, I might use chat GPT to write you a. Uh, Thank you, message. Like, nice to meet you today. <laughs> you know, save me like three minutes, something like that. <coughs> right? So, a lot of things is going to be implemented and, and, and generated by AI, yeah. like it or not. So, um, and it will generate a lot of value, right? Anything that can generate value, that will. Then I would suggest to our investor, let's look at it. We'll see how it goes. So we are we are focusing on AI and Web3 at the moment. I think one of the key things is, is when Connie was talking about this is, you know, um, of course we're seeing the upsurge in terms of uh, people talking about AI and the utilization, application, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it's one thing. Um, when you talk about a lot of people using chat GPT, um, uh, the usage of it doesn't necessarily guarantee a good business model. The same, um, because at the, at the end of the day, a lot of people talk about uh, those people actually working on the AI, uh, whether it's an LLM, you know, um, um, software technology, and all these things, might or might not actually generate a high return business. So that's one thing. Using that as a tool is another thing. So on that, I would like to ask the, 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 the two speakers actually from the industry, and then let's start with Bianca. Um, Bianca has a very interesting background. Um, she, she started as a data scientist, um, and uh, was working on various very big corporations, and now working for a hospitality group, small hotel group. And so I would like to ask Bianca that how you seeing that, and, and how is AI currently working in your group? And what are you seeing that, like in three years' time, um, and what would that be? 
would have, you know, would be a lot of these um, uh, back to uh, back to read all these things would be, you know, substituted by you know AI or robotics, etc., etc. Thank you very much. Hospitality industry used to be a very uh, human-centric industry, which were labor-intensive. But with AI, I always think that technology is an enabler for support business growth. So it's more about how we use the technology, how it supports our business. So AI is an enabler. For example, we're using that in revenue management, how we can monitor, uh, for example, the frequency of the, the flight occupancy of people flying into Hong Kong. Is there any convention happening, events happening around the city? What the other hotel rates they are selling right now? So we can price our room accurately, uh, just one way. And of course, uh, AI-wise, uh, we're talking about AI, but usually we uh, think about robots. We have a big debate or discussion about in our group is that we do think that brand value has to be delivered by human. So it's by human touch itself, but not by robots. But AI do have us on operational efficiency, have us on enhancing our gas experience, and do have us on uh, replacing a routine task. Because maybe many of you have might have experience in that it's very hard to recruit talents nowadays. We're losing a lot of them. So and like young people do not like to do routine tasks. So yes, yeah. So we're thinking about how we can replace using AI to replace routine tasks on that way. And besides uh, AI-wise, uh, we are using a lot of smart energy management platform in order for sustainability, we monitor um, usage, the, the air quality, temperature, the water, and so. So that helps on AI as well too. Yes, yes. And oh, and so that AI doesn't have not only help us in saving the cost wise, but also help us to improve our top line revenue, uh, top line revenue in terms of revenue management. So. So I've been starting writing my technology strategy for the upcoming three to five years. We do see that more and more adaptation on AI because well, uh, for news is that we're going to double our properties, our hotel properties around the world by 2030. So while we're building our new hotels, we're thinking about why we're not adapting more on technology wise. Thank you, thank you. Now, um, I will ask another data analytics expert. Tell us more about uh, how AI is helping the exchange in the, this, you know, various platforms, etc. I'll see what I can, how I'm going to answer this question. I think um, I'll go to the first question that you asked actually in terms of where AI is and where I can talk about the hype. Um, if I were to go back and I think the what AI has been overly broad use case uh, used for now. And for those of us in the industry, AI, that is the term, has been actually, we talk about neural networks, we talk about decision trees, and for predictive purposes, it's been for 50 years. You're not sort of really been aware of that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> to, to, to Dr. point, it's really the breakthrough, and thank you, Vitali, the ability of data and the compute power that we have be able to actually crunch things much more faster and to a point, quote unquote, real time, will be real time. And bringing that knowledge of understanding where we are today into the next action we're going to take is become more rapid and it's become closing the gap between from inside directions. And that's where I think the explosive of the word AI in the last few years is, is generating that bit. We know a lot of information before this, just that we're not able to act on it in time for us to get value. I think just to baseline that bit up. And on the high bit, um, in the financial industry, we've been using predictive analytics, next step, next action to next best action, when to call for last 10 years, right? Um, no longer, I've been in the bank industry for a joint exchange, uh, two, two months uh, now. If I think back and look at the financial industry, 20 years ago, we do mass market blasting, right? You get SMS, everybody gets the same SMS. You get an order Last 10 years, you get personalized message, but that's the SMS. Last three years, you get notifications, as in your app, 
your post notification when you walk into a, a department store or hotels. We know you are that. And what are the surrounding marketing promotions that our merchant has to try to push that to you? So increasingly over time, the artificial intelligence is actually in there where you like it or not, but not so pervasive. But I think with the way the last, if I fast forward uh, to the last 12 months, everybody talk about AI, it's just talking about generative AI. Right. I mean, chat GPT, great. And uh, I'll pause back, I was talking about um, today's conference or today's meeting or something, or stuff that, what's the best thing to do there actually? Well, Alex, if I don't know what's the best thing, someone just ask chat GPT or just read it back to you guys, what the question is. And Dr. William has been very kind and said, look, go by the flow, there's no question. So everything you see here is it's our own. Well, no, Gary generated a list using. You asked none of that. No, he used ChatGPT. I didn't. So I didn't. I didn't follow his uh, his list. <laughs> <laughs> so I think financial industry should be using all that as a summary. But I guess where we go from here is really um, the the transform model and last uh, LLMs and where does where does it bring us apart from using it creatively. Um, we can use it to respond to Alex's tension notes. We can chat GPT, talk to chat GPT, reply to emails later on. Yeah. But the business model is actually where um, a lot of people are trying to find out. And that's where I think use cases uh, is very good. Yeah. I think, I think the, the, the point I would try to follow up on this is because, you know, um, these are big organizations here. Um, but Hong Kong and a lot of other countries. Uh, Lincoln is also supported by a lot of SMEs. Um, you know, these are the, the people working out there, you know, with a, a restaurant or a store. Or, I mean, a lot of people heard about AI and just don't know how to get involved and how to leverage, and how to use the tool. So I'll go back to, to the calling. I mean, if the S, it's not just you know, restricted to SMEs, but also corporation companies as a whole. Um, they want to know more about AI. How are you going to tell them um, this, this, at this stage um, how to leverage what AI can do for them? And is it a positive return um, of investment type of uh, projects to invest on AI? From Microsoft, <laughs> <laughs> I actually gave Microsoft. Gary asked me to give Microsoft some some advice. I'm not sponsored this event, so <laughs> I think uh, I I live and died in this industry for many years from technology. I have been in blockchain. I was a blockchain lead for financial services when it came up, oh, really? and uh, cross crypto and all that. I think the reality is because the, there's always an influx of technology, cloud computing, you know, all of that. You think about. It. It's not because there's a technology out there, I need to find something to do with it. I think that was the wrong question asked, and I often get that question in a, in a conference, and this is my, my advice to all my customers. Just because there's a generative AI here, just because there's a blockchain here, doesn't mean you have to use it. You have to really answer yourself in, two, in terms of business impact. What problem am I trying to solve? And what technology or what tools, which technology is part of, and what are the people and skills and your, your infrastructure? What are those things that help me solve the problem? Then you always find business value. So you can do a lot of business value with just data. That's why I wrote the article, data is a new currency. And then we talk about AI. So I think people are trying to go one step to the mass. I always say that. Let's ground ourselves, right? Do you know your data? Do you know what's the best selling product for the last quarter? Right? And then you do predict it. If you don't even know your business, then no. And then productivity is what a lot of things can do. I mean, in particular, if you think about generative AI, I mean, today is a very special day for Microsoft. We just kicked off our financial year, and Satya was just talking to all of us. Why generative AI is so important? I think there are two things that you mentioned that really you know, resonate as well with me. One is large language model, which is what ChatGPT is about. Nobody can analyze human language. Now you can. So you think about the speed of adoption. Because the problem with blockchain and all of that is because it's so difficult to adopt. That's why you cannot scale. Mm -hmm. Large language, I mean, I don't have the ChatGPT app, my husband has. He's <laughs> much more techy than I am. He uses ChatGPT everything, right? But a non tech person can use ChatGPT and ask all the questions. 
because it's so easy to adopt and because you can humanize it, you can use the language model to, to understand and to instruct people to do so. The second piece of it is the insight. So if I have the large language model, I can operate. Now I have the data, and I can draw insights from the data. You combine the two together. That's the power. And then you can say what kind of use case I can use this to power and that's tremendous. That's the reason why it's not a hype, because it's so good. Very good, very good. I'll, we'll come back to drill a little more on, on data then, because we have quite a few data people here. But, but going back to where to put our money first. <laughs> <laughs> now, Alex, you do know about your interest in looking at you know, you know, web free, AI, all these things. Where do you put your money? If you, if I'm asking you today, um, you have a lot of uh, uh, money to invest. Then, what are you looking at? The, the, the technology as such, um, emerging technology in AI, various fields of AI, um, or, uh, or look at it from another angle. I was um, I was in London um, two weeks ago, and I'm talking to a to a PE fund, and and the way he, they look at uh, they look at uh, AI is that whenever they look at an a company they want to invest, they will ask the management of the company. How are they actually incorporate AI into their future strategy? Um, and different industry domain will probably utilize AI to a different extent. Um, but I think the point is coming back to Connie's just said, they want to know that particular company whether they actually have that foresight to look at to an emerging technology and see whether this can actually help them in to achieve their you know the objective of the company as well. So. Will you do that? Um, and the first question is, you know, along this AI, metaverse, etc., new emerging technology, um, whether you are looking at the underlying technology you will invest, or whether it's more on the application side, you think it's more interesting, will generate it, or will be less risky, etc. Love the question. Um, I hate the question like we have the technology. What are the problems that we going to solve? Right? So, so it's like we have AI, we have Web3, we have ICO, we have Metaverse. Like, is there anything to do with it? So, what I like and what I usually look at cases is give me a use case. Give me a use case. Don't just tell me a use case. Give me a use case. Are you sure that people need that? Right? If, and validate that. that Usually what I'll do is to ask a startup founder, look for a professional company, you know, do some research, right? Don't I know you have the 10 page PowerPoints, but you know, I know it, but try to look for a company that can help you to do the research, asking like 100 people, 200 people, right? Try to validate your concept first, right? And believe it or not, 99% of the startup, they just skip this process. So if they do enough research, ask enough people, and say, okay, great, this is the people want this solution, and if this solution will be implemented by AI, great, let's do that. Right? So we don't invest in AI, we invest in the solutions that might use the latest trend or technology. I don't care if it's Web3 or AI or ICO all, all put together. You know? So we look at that because um, we need to look for return path for our investment, right? This is what I do, right? To run a VC fund, the, the way we make money is we make money for our investor and then we, we get a cut from it, right? We call it carry interest, right? That, that's all we do. That's all we do, right? So we, I mean, the management fee cannot cannot even uh, uh, enough for, for me to, to keep the, the, the company running. So in these days, we, we'll look at some cases. I mean, do you have a use case? This is the first question now. How can you prove the use case is useful? So this is different from, from, from other VCs. So VCs is like, okay, AI is hard, let's, let's, let's get like 20 years startup to use AI. I, I'm, I'm doing it the other way around. That, that's how I would approach it. Let, let, let me stay with, with you on this. Um, I, because I have asked, you ask other people, you know, whether a startup or anything, you know, the, the use case, and how they could, you could use the leverage technology. I'm asking you, are you using AI 
Or can you can you use AI? I mean, you yes, you 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 writing a thank you note. <laughs> I mean, the investment community, the VC, the PE, can they leverage AI? Actually, yes. Uh, one of the common question I, I I get people ask us my my company my colleagues is uh, how big is your fund? Um, who are your investors? Uh, what is the minimum ticket size? Uh, what do you focus on? I mean, I'm sure that when we talk, you ask me questions like this. I mean, I can tell you, I can program ChatGPT with another system. You know, <laughs> make sure that I have all the answers there, and it can help me to answer like ninety percent of the questions that I first meet someone. Because sometimes uh, a lot of good stuff, they, they look for a VC and they, they want to know more about the VC. Mm. So at least I think AI at this moment can help me to do a lot of screening mm. and, and save us a lot of time before the first meeting. That's good. That's yeah. good. I think saving a lot of time, um, which is kind of partial of this productivity things we're talking about, and minimizing underlying and netting costs, which is the key success factor for any business. Um, I would like to come back to the data thing. I I, um, I was a banker before, um, quite a few years back, when we were very young, actually. Um, <laughs> and probably not. <laughs> no, so um, I, I, I was the CEO of Citibank Hong Kong, yeah. back in the late 90s. Right. And uh, we were at that time, Citibank C Corp is one of the the best bank group in the world to leverage data mining. Yeah. We talked about data mining at that time. And mm -hmm. we used huge IBM supercomputer to yeah. actually work on um, you know, cardholders, spending pattern, and all these things. I used to have to wait. Uh, I asked my data mining group to analyze certain particular demographics and behavior. I had to wait a week. <laughs> to, to get the results back. Now, now coming back to these this AI things. Now, um, using AI, whether it's in the hospitality or in the finance industry, that will generate a lot of data. A lot of data. So, I don't think all organizations will have the power and the capabilities to be able to manage that massive amount of data. So I would like to ask you too, but let the lady first, okay? <laughs> yeah, to first. And as a, as a data scientist yourself, um, to, to, to start with, um, how are you seeing organization um, coping with that? Wow, that is a big question. Well, I'm part of a data scientist and I move on to bank as a senior manager in data office. I would say data, uh, you start with, they usually start with data governance. So we're writing up policies, defining the R and R of data owner, data user, and data lean. So with the policy to adapt, for example, password to thing nine and some a lot of policies like this guy data thing so. And then they will move on to data standardizations. So having uh, standards of each data field so that they can standardize um, the data in order to make for them to make sense. Uh, usually follow the ISO standards. And then we move on to metadata, so like a data dictionary for data scientists. So data scientists, do you know what fields they have in the company, how we can call the API, and what format, and so. Mm -hmm. And lastly, to the, I would say the real, uh, real realization, the potential of data with the data analytics part. Mm -hmm. uh, but usually, CEO can't wait for that. So usually, we do have some quick wins. <laughs> <laughs> we can write a policy, because policy may time, take a year to write, because not about policy, how hard it is to write, but how all the use agree on that, about on the R and R. That's super hard. So usually we work on data analytics, showing the quick wins, what data all is capable to do, and in the meantime, we work on the policy. So going back to data analytics, uh, there are a lot of data, not only every company wide, because in terms of wire, uh, last I mentioned about flight occupancy. We actually share data among the group. So luckily we have Cathay within our group, so we know a lot about more how travelers traveling around the world, coming to Hong Kong, and with, so that's why we collaborate a lot together, but that part is the hard part too, because um, each group was starting to think, oh, what's benefit me if I'm sharing data to you? Uh, like, okay, I know like, I do know like, how many travelers are coming to Hong Kong, but are your hotel business going to bring business to my major business? 
So here comes down more on the strategic high level discussion among the groups. Right. Yes. And for data politics, then it goes into how data plays and you know, like a lot of legacy data comes through for many years. So we start to think of if we even have to build a data team to clean themselves, it will take take some uh, take a number of resources. So why don't we distribute out? So we allocate uh, in terms of the data quality score. So we measure data quality in terms of its cleanliness, of its formats, and so uh, different correct dimensions. We distribute to each hotel GM. They're responsible for their own data cleansing itself. So originally, we are thinking about uh, should we divide them by alphabetical order in terms of surname? So A to G, this hotel GM, and then otherwise. <laughs> then it's like, oh, that's not fair. Like, there are many, like, Ding and Chan, a whole in, like, in Chinese properties. So, we're starting to think about, so how about we distribute them out by who stay, which hotel the guest stayed last time? Or the first time? So if he went to our Shanghai hotel first, then moved to Beijing, and then Chengdu, so which hotel should be responsible for this guest data? <laughs> so we're having a strong debate on uh, our discussion on that. Because, so we have been putting that them into our GM KPIs. <clears throat> so everyone is responsible for data. But that, that, that's interesting. So it takes more than just the, the data people to be yes. able to learn. How to use data as well. Yes. Um, so, so that's that's now 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 is your turn. Okay. Because no, 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 I think she can continue. <laughs> I think just, 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 just have to be fair. Yeah, no, you're very late at ready. Uh, I can see that. I'm trying to hide that. <laughs> but, um, the point I think uh, Bianca just mentioned, you know, um, sharing data within the group. Now, obviously, there's also this this data privacy. Um, Issues that we need to, to think of as well. Now, for an exchange, you, you also, you know, you are basically um, leveraging a lot of embedded technology, the back end, and huge amount of data um, as well. How, first of all, as I said, you know, organizationally, um, do you have the right and enough resources to be able to manage that? And secondly, how are you seeing all this with AI coming along, even more data being generated? How are you going to protect the, the private within the privacy side of things as well? I love when, when Bianca uh, first two answers is kind of straight away to the data governance. Um, the fact that some of you are not not all, but um, we have seen data being centralized in. Obviously, that we we can see. You ask the question, I want to know what the transactional decision role of that number is, right? Back then, it's a centralized. And everything that you want is you go to one area. But that's where the answer to that, because there's so many demands, there's not a lot of supplies. But what you can guarantee back then is consistency. Right? right? Nobody's gonna give you the, the trade volume today is 95 billion and then the other one pays 150 right now. But over time, um, we try to decentralize that because the moment you ask a question in a firm, there's a lot more people that is now data capable or, or technology capable. They can go to answer your own data uh, question. So CEOs here, uh, executives here, when you ask a question, a lot of people can give those answers. Can you get the same answer that's consistent across? That's where data governance can kind of come to play. When you decentralize and fabricate around, around that speed, governance comes into, into conversation alongside a problem called data privacy or the data sharing across departments. Because back then you have the marketing team, that kind of probably much, you know, or decision science team, whatever you call it back then, that you all the answers. So in exchange or in FIs, what we're trying to do at least, um, I was with HSBC before this, and my last talk was in Tencent. And now, uh, two months ago, I joined uh, exchange. So what I'm trying to do there is, Ultimately, we're going to do innovations and in data. But how do I do that in a quote unquote technology or data firm, which has an exchange? The fundamental problem we're trying to solve is actually data literacy. I'm trying to do the sales here as well. Um, 
really for everybody to understand their impact in this goal, right? Their impacts of what they do on a day-to-day -day basis contributes to the underlying end result KPI or decisions being made required to make, are we going left? Are we going right? Do we have to have a product or not? So from all the way from your data entry guys, your IT which manage your interfaces to systems to systems, the quality of that is very important. Now, again, go back 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago, when I first joined uh, the, uh, any, uh, the industry, we talk about data quality, we're talking about raw record reconciliation. You get a million record and one, you reconcile the next interface is a million record and one. If it's not a uh, million and one, you're gonna say, okay, this, you know, can go back and rerun the match. But in the data world, it is not the record, but it's the value of those data. Are those being corrupted? Moving from one area to another. When you have people entering information, is it as per the one given by your client? Name in, in, in the hospitality perspective, give me the screen or something and you uh, just call Chen. Right? I think that's where the foundation for it to me is everybody needs to be aware of their direct or indirect contribution to the data before we talk about engineering uh, of by things like that. I just want to answer one question that you have when you're a CEO. If you ask me what's the number there, I will say, boss, what number do you want? <laughs> because I'm the only one giving you that number. <laughs> but now you can't. Somebody else is going to give you a different number. <laughs> Thank you. Um, come back, Connie. Um, as we talk about relatively why AI has been such a hot topic as part is because of this ChatGPT thing, which is closely related to Microsoft. Um, could you share with us what is the latest development of some of these products and AI related products of Microsoft? Well, first thing I have to correct you, um, ChatGPT is a consumer product. <laughs> and, uh, what I can talk about is how we use that is on our Microsoft Azure OpenAI service. Yep. So we don't want to associate with a consumer product because it's, it's a different, um, and then our Azure, I would say that um, First of all, from, from our perspective, it's really how can we embrace something like ChatGPT in terms of the large language model into our first party solution. So my first question to you all is how many of you have watched our co-pilot videos? So Microsoft Copilot, Dynamics Copilot, Bing, and all that. Have anyone watched any of our co-pilot video? Nice family is here. Um, not many, so I will recommend you to go watch it because it's really, really awesome. I, I'll pick one and just to give you my personal perspective. So Microsoft 365, which is Outlook, you know, the, the IMs and PowerPoint, Excel that you use. Imagine I'm here actually, they know that I, I actually have a meeting before this, so I, I have to be somewhere, and then I have a parallel meeting somewhere. By the time I go home on a normal day, I will go back and listen to the 60 minutes or the 90 minutes of the, the Teams meeting that was recorded, and I have to go through the entire 60, 70, 90 minutes and figure out what this has to do with me. Right? I mean, we all do that. With an M365 compiler, you don't have to do that anymore. It will tell me what everybody talked about, what are some of the, why they come to that conclusion, what's the action, what is that to do with me, and what's name, calling your action icon. Summarize for me in five minutes. I saved 90 minutes. That's one thing. PowerPoint, Excel, all of that. I mean, this is really what I think is how it will impact every one of us from a productivity, because that's what we do. We, we kind of live and die into our outlook and right. in all the communications we do. So to that point, I think it's really valuable and it's something that we as an employee also looking forward to, and we're also launching into one. So all of those co-pilots uh, is the first thing that we come back. And then the second thing is really, how do I empower the partners, the people that you invest in, and the fintech or startups, customers, and our, cu our customer science and financial services. To give you an example, right, simple case like Market research. We all do tons of research. Which company make better product? I mean, as a VC, you do tons of that. How much time did it take us to do that? You are asking a question, now it embedded the, the capability. If you analytics in an annual report, it takes hours. These are some of the, I would say, low hanging things that happens a lot. And then from the marketing research, you go to the pitch book, right? It can help you 
summarize, you don't like this picture, I'll give you another picture. And the other thing is, it actually turned you, all of us, into the expert of PowerPoint, Excel, whatever, because they will tell you which one to animate, which tool to use, which Excel formula to use, to do that. I can't turn myself into an expert, right? So I would say, you know, from an organization perspective, it's really for you to help making an average knowledge person to a much more skilled. From a brand building perspective, if I'm an insurance agent, I can't give you all the product comparison. No way, right? I want one company to another company. I now can do it. I can also pilot it for you and as an agent or whatever, or having a staff and coffee. Intuitively, it tells you, oh, you ask me this question. This is a brochure. This is the script in that page, in that paragraph. Talks about what you ask. You know, it's just some simple thing, and of course, we can go into much further on AI and all that. But I think just for that, I would say this is going to really help us a lot. And I would say from our perspective, it's really how can we be more tech savvy? Like, how can we embrace technology to help us better and become more intelligent and then actually free up some of the time to do something you like? I think that's, 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 that's a good point here. You call me that about tech um, And that is, that is one of the key challenges that right? people talking about um, as well. Is when you're transforming all these things um, in leveraging AI in your home business, um, the type of, you know, these, the, the type of startups you're investing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so my question really is asking, whether the organization organization have the right and enough capabilities in being able to tax out enough to be able to manage all these things. So this is a, a big challenge. Um, so I would like to open up and, and just say, you know, Bianca, Patrick, Alex, what do you, what do you guys think of about the challenges? We, we talk about all these good things about how AI could help. But I'm sure it's not as easy as we said. Um, so, what are the key challenges and any hint to, to overcome those challenges? From an adoption perspective? Yeah. I would say, <laughs> um, I, like the, I like the fact that, so, Exchange, um, we are exploring the tax amortization in terms of the listings, the yeah, annual report that comes into play. Um, one of the challenges that we want to overcome, I won't say high, but when it comes down to the operation side of it, if you go and ask chat to be okay, all sort of thing or uh, that matter, and give you the best price quarter for a particular company and what's the return and dividend, the internal as a end user, I think we're very complacent to think that's the number I'll accept. But in a, in a corporation, your legal, your compliance, start to ask how much we can trust that data. Would yeah. I be able to take that data or the response directly and incorporate into my you know, recommendation for my business actions? Individually, uh, text summarization, um, Zoom meeting, trans, you know, voice to text, text and summarize, it helps personally. I think as a corporation wise to adopt that, still that needs to a bit of, um, I would say, a, bit of a journey to adapt. Really comes back to the, um, I would say, the ethical use of AI, mm -hmm. transparency, ethical accountability. How is that being generated? I think that needs to mature in the next six to 12 months before it can be fully adopted. Now that's only in terms of adapting, but obviously there are around uh, you know other questions around how do we get the rest of the people more tech savvy, and how do we want them to use that tool uh, internally? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about even the GM; they all need to know you know how to use data, and with more and more AI tools um, coming into use, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Do you think your organization, for example, do they in general? Have the right type of tech savviness um, um, to be able to leverage that? Wow, as you might have. Oh, no, oh, you're talking about in general, don't talk about your own. Okay. I'm putting her in the spot. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, in generally, the companies who have been successful for 
many, many, even hundreds of years, they have uh, it's easy to have a tendency that, oh, like current business model quite success, uh, do I really have the urge to change or would change even bring me even like worse financial results? So I'm happy with that because those uh, in general wise that uh, <laughs> more on brand reputation and customer loyalty than earning a lot of money. Because they think, oh, currently a lot of gen, like in currently the sixth generation, seventh generation in charge right now. So that's that really, we have to change because it's more on the traditional business of properties and hotels. So renting them out would be great. Money. But I do think that uh, uh, luckily in our group that uh, I think it is quite a top-down approach from our CEO himself. He's very tech savvy. Uh, we're looking a lot of ways in order to leveraging AI, for example, labor costs in general wise, uh, it takes out 50% of our operating expenses. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much not. So we're thinking about how we can do optimizing on the staffing, like on the flexible staffing, depends on if we're having events, the occupancy and so, but this may be a good news to see, oh, but that might be a good one to start off because yeah, uh, so we'll be laid off. <laughs> we're learning adopting like AI, we will see resistance from the junior staff. Um, so I think because I've been implementing quite a few of uh, AI projects. From AI, we will have to optimize the workflow, get what they are currently using to practice, and then we qualify it, right? But usually, at very first, they think, oh, you're replacing my job, you're trying to know, knowing my job better. No, I'm not going to share with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. When they're writing some AI algorithms in the AI oh, race, oh, oh, then they would start, oh, that's actually the result, doesn't help us. We're not yeah, going to adopt yeah, the platform when it is already to be launched. So, yeah. yeah. Just, just like when many organizations when they uh, change the uh, supply chain management model to SAP and all these things. <laughs> right. A lot of these reluctance. Um, I just want to talk, I think it's really, if you look at individual or the corporate, in between you have your SMEs, companies, and you have the fintechs. The, the, it's really the more large corp have problems implementing that. Individuals with SME and the startup would have a lot more um, success in. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting, Patrick, because you actually think that some of the smaller, um, nothing to lose. Yes, yeah, yeah, they're, right, they're, right, they're right, more right. flexible. Yes, you know. Um, so, so that's that, that's coming to the um, to the last question I would like to ask to the panel before I open up for maybe a few questions. So, Alex, um, all, over the last six months or so, the type of startups, well, your company needs money to come to you. Um, have you sense that um, they will generally talk about AI because AI is a name useful for fundraising? Yes. And, and as well as they do actually know what they're talking about? <laughs> the, the short answer is yes. We did invest in two companies. Actually, they are both serving hotels. Looking <laughs> and Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So what they do is something very simple. Like, you can say that it's AI. Like for example, like one of our portfolio companies, it has the system to integrate with the property management system of the hotel, like they are to the Oracle and you know the Michaels. And what they do is to automatically send out some WhatsApp message and WeChat messages to all the hotel guests to do, to do something, to say hi or to increase the revenue of the hotel, right? So in the last six months, because uh, people are coming back from COVID and uh, all the hotels, they, they don't have enough manpower. So number one, they want to save some uh, manpower, right? Like for example, check-in and all, all those things. And, and the other is how can I improve our revenue without hiring more people? Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of, I'm not sure if this is AI question. The, the first question you asked me is uh, like, uh, um, how do I invest? How do I pick a company to invest? I'll look for the solution first. But we are lucky enough that we met some companies. They they are using some automation or AI technology mm -hmm. to solve some real problem right now. Mm -hmm. So this this is we, we are very lucky to have cases like that, and we, and and we will focus on that, mm -hmm. right? So um, about corporate, I mean. It's very difficult for hotelier to, to learn about ChatGPT and all those things, right? All they want 
to, to care about is okay, uh, every single day, 3 p.m. in the hotel lobby, there are like a lot of people, right? How can I stop that? If people going to the supermarket can, can just uh, check out by, by going to the kiosk, they can do the same with the hotel kiosk, right? So after we check in, there's a lot of data, right? Stored in, in the hotel's database. And hotel doesn't have a lot of system, like most of the hotels, they have a centralized system called property management system. Like 80% of the hotels in the world, it, it, uh, they, they're using Oracle. Michaels, right? And someone, some startup will, will spark enough to integrate with their system and then they can help hotel to automate a lot of things and generate more money for that. Mm -hmm. so, so all I'm talking about is, is not something scientific, but some real problem. And, and actually the hotel doesn't care you are AI or blockchain or, or anything. They just, just want to know what kind of problem and what kind of value you generate for that. that that's how I... Okay, so we're talking about solution. Solution and value. Value proposition, that's all. I still have one generic question to ask them, but before that, I would like to just, just open it up to see if there's any, any questions. Go ahead. Hi, hello. Uh, during your FinTech Association, I'm, well, personally, I'm really tight. I'm managing this committee, and I make many CIOs, CDOs in financial services. That's how Patrick and I met. And I, uh, I've been for many years doing transformation in financial services, but at that time, you didn't call it AI, you called it BI, you called it uh, digital transformation, and there were many other words that were kind of, in fact, rephrasing, saying the same thing, which was like, how to make things easier, faster, generating revenue, reducing, I would say, our cost, and mitigating risk. So, one commonality I see in all of this uh, different ways, and I've been mostly working with large institutions, is two or three bloggers. The first one that I see is that the companies are very protective of their data, so data security and protection is paramount. Whatever technology you use, and I totally agree with Colin that this time it's a bit different, because really there's a, there's a steep rise in terms of use case that could be implemented, particularly with integration of technologies such as Microsoft. One more advertisement. Uh, but uh, the, the challenge is the data security uh, is still, is still very, very valid and hampering a bit the deployment and solution. Second one, which is the legacy system. Because you have a lot of layers of many decades. You have AS400 still running in many core systems in many banks. I mean, what is AS400? Nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I know, I know, I know. I know. I know. I know. And the third one is that uh, many software can be updated, but people are very really difficult to reprogram. And uh, change management is probably the hardest to manage. You can train new generations in it, they are already digital native or everything. But for if you take a back office operator who's been working on his steps for many years on it this way, and he his knowledge, the history of the firm, it's, this is a challenge. So I'd like to have your views on how to address this three topics. That's a big question, sorry. But uh, yeah, I'd like to have your perspectives. I mean, maybe starting with uh, Patrick, uh, Alex, yeah. You know, we can ask your client. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, what's the question again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think go ahead to, to, to talk about basically is, I, I, I think I was trying to ask the question right. before, which is, you know, um, the, the organization in, in adopting uh, something like AI uh, or new technologies into the organization, you know, that's actually raised a lot of challenges as well, mm -hmm. um, from change management to process, re-engineering, um, you know, training, skill development, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, so that is some of the challenges. It's not just the technology. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, <laughs> I, I'm probably going to do a front rush, but um, I was having a conversation with um, one of the CIOs previously. Moving from where we are and into a digital world, you heard about digital transformation and so on. Any digital transformation, not just AI requires uh, effort of time, top-down uh, directions, and the vigor and the investment to do it. The challenge that I, we see, and we had this conversation previously, it is not 
We would like to think that it's actually a top-down sponsorship, but it is not. We would like to see that it's actually the, the, the capital. Actually, it's also not. And, and I was thinking, why is it not? And the third one is actually the job security and so on. Also not. It is actually the persistence of these three together to go through, and not just one CI or one CEO's tenure, it has to be with making a joint, at least three CIOs tenure in the same company with the same vision throughout that, let's say, three times three, nine years. And when you have that, then you can transform from another tech, which is the corporate side, uh, and kind of scale individuals over the, the uh, corporate side, then you see success. I think. That three combination is actually the hardest uh, for me to actually see. And what I will talk about, is there any success in, in that space? JP, Dam Damon, J. Morgan is probably the one that can see that through. He has been there for the last 10, 15 years as a CEO. And he's been driving AI transformation for that long period, building the Foundation of everybody, technology-wise, data, and now they have been, you know, very focused. They have been running AI use cases, 150 to 200. I can't remember how many use cases that for the last couple of years. And we're just talking about there's a lot of use cases coming in, but they are talking about they have already run that. So I think it's really the top three: the ability of money, people, and. Sure, I can answer that. Well, Thank you for the question. I deal with that every day. So. <laughs> um, I can tell you, uh, I mean, I'm 10 years at Microsoft now, and my first slide is digital transformation. 10 years fast forward, I'm still talking about digital transformation, so to your point. And I used to sell software too. And I can tell you, I have the same software implemented in one bank and another bank, absolutely different result. And the reason for that is, one bank is taking the entire software that we did and implemented it. Another bank turned it upside down, totally customized it to something totally I can't recognize. They are totally. <laughs> so I would say, you know, the, the reality is change is the hardest thing, particularly for financial services. Because we are trained, because this is also part of, you know, it's like the, the good and the bad together, right? The reason why I want to put money on the bank, because I feel safe. And that's because you're not making changes unnecessary, you're not taking the risk unnecessary, so I put my money in the bank. So there's a reason for that, it's a trust. Right. And now making a change, to some extent, will I fall, will I fail, right. will I be charged or fined by the regulator? So all of that comes down to what am I trying to do? You, you cannot answer that question, nothing <coughs> will be implemented. So whether it is bottom up, top down, it doesn't matter. It has to be a mission. It has to be something that everybody, IT, policy, risk, governance, security, everybody has to buy into that one statement. Then only the wagon will move. Otherwise, the IT will move, the business may say something, somebody will move, nothing will change. So you really got to define, <coughs> going back to my first thing, what problem are you trying to solve? Yeah. If you're not solving a problem, don't waste your time. Very good, very good. Any, any more questions? Okay. Uh, I'm very happy to um, get to know Tony. Actually, I think I, find, I connect you on the LinkedIn, but I highly resonate among all speakers with uh, Tony, just because of Microsoft. And actually, um, we're sort of talking about generative AI. I think uh, Microsoft, your CEO, have come by. I think there's a history of any advance, I mean, technology advancement, and it's not. AI. It's more than that previously. And I would like to listen to Connie, or oh, I read the books about that. It's all about, I mean, like 70 years ago, 2013, even before Hong Kong talking about the innovation. I think I am from Chinua. I talk, I, I got people telling me about data scientists, deep learning. It's only the buzzword, just like Alex said. It's just a change of buzzword, but in a way, it's the technological advancement with very solid background. I mean, something not solid, they would go after two years. So I personally just read recently who is the best company that lead AI, and I buy the stock, and I found it's Microsoft. 
and I have to decide whether I need to use uh, a cloud because I need to manage some business globally, uh, but internationally, so I need a cloud storage. So I was figuring out, you know, I'm a Google user, but then I found out and talked to a centric. I decided to go with Microsoft Cloud. You know why? Simply, um, they have the AI. Very easy to find out. You know, you have to look forward to find the winner and you can move faster, right? Secondly, <laughs> look at Bill Gates. He has been more favored by IBM. Huh? So <laughs> then they won't be a bank by China. But I need to do business as in Hong Kong. You need to, you know, match as I was connected. China is our motherland that connects with outside world, where you need to have a tool which you got, you don't get, you know, the struggles, right? Like the TikTok and everything that can mess with Alibaba. Anyway, I buy by dance is okay. So I think I promise to give us another session to, <laughs> or tell me what other event about the Microsoft. Now, I went to some of the class on it. I went to Google one, but I'm a bit, little afraid that they will be, you know, block <laughs> by the um, China. It's been blocked anyway. And you know, Microsoft, look at the big guys in China, um, they hide for Kanai. And even who's this um by dance guy, John Lang, they're all from Microsoft, if I remember correctly. So that's what I have to give a big clap to Connie. Thank you. Thank you. So that is no question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh actually I, I asked a question is okay, it's for you, David Gartelow. The question is I'm not a professor. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I uh, sorry, sorry, because I do need to excite about the having to see the big donation. The unstructured data. I, I actually last week I, I went to the IBM um, AI Tech Summit. Oh, fantastic. So you know they have to catch up Microsoft, right? <laughs> so um, my gathering of the knowledge is that a lot of SME are very behind in the technology technology and knowledge, okay, they don't even know how to play with the WeChat marketing. So when you do the branding, I think all the big guys like Swire, you mentioned any of these big even government, I don't know how good they are. But it's a SME they I felt empathetic with them. Okay. How can they not even able to get the Excel, <laughs> the paper, the unstructured data to fit into these to become something that the AI uh, kind of thing can help them. This is something I have a big question. I still haven't done. Uh, that, that, that was a question I asked Microsoft oh, really? before as well. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to do it, a, a new initiative then. No, I think, well, I, think, I, think, think? I think I think I um, think um, uh, given time is more or less, but the, uh, it's not a one particular software company question. I think, um, and again, this also coming back to the early on point about. Uh, two things. Normally, it's about first, it's about change management. So it's about mindset. It's, always it's right. about mindset and culture. And the other one is about education and skill. Right, right. And I think on this, on this, especially on SMB, yeah. that's why normally in other parts of the world, the the government and other things step into it as as well to help. And you know, in Hong Kong, we do have the productivity councils and all these things are trying to help. Um, and, and they do have a lot of resources, but um, um, but obviously there are there 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 are more things they can they can do. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, uh, just a quick question. Um, I come from a family office, family operation. Um, elders, youngers. They, we have issues where elders don't want to look at data. They want to run a business from the seat of the pants, entrepreneurial. So what advice would you give the second generation that understands data, that understands that AI is a critical tool? How can we explain to the elder generation, while they're still running the company, that we need to go through transition? Anyone? I can give you a try. My two cents is the real thing is you have to put your value. So I run in Paro. That's what we do. We run Paro, Apple Phones, Machine Learning, Forecasting, Cash Forecasting. We may use our existing one. We run Paro with the data 
and we compare the results. Results basically said, but it's, you have to prove the value. That's it's not because there's, as I say, right? It's not because there's a technology there you have to use it. It's not because of that. Is the technology how does it help? What value does it bring? I think, I think, I think this is not only related to AI. Um, I mean, all through the years we've been talking about, Kong was talking about uh, digital transformation and all these things. Um, internet has been around um, since the early 90s. Um, every time we have a way, new wave of technology coming out, it is, it, it's not that easy to actually convince the older generation. But I think, as I said, this is part and partial of a mindset problem. Mindset problem. I, I, let, me, let me show you something. I was in, I was in Milan um, <clears throat> last two months ago. Um, I was, I was speaking at a conference called Tech Emotion. It's about AI and humanity. Mm -hmm. That is supposedly my last question to the uh, because we all talk about the good things. And mm -hmm. actually, at that particular conference, over sixty percent of the time we talk about the bad things that the AI could happen, and it could as well. No one could guarantee. Of everything, they, they are not talking about AI is artificial intelligence. AI, for some of them, for 60% of the people there, is talking about alien intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, alien doesn't necessarily mean that they are bad. It could be good as well. Right. We just, the point about alien is we, we just don't know. We just don't know. And when you think about it, to a certain extent, it mirrors to a certain point, because there are, so, there, there, there are enough things out there that we don't know about um, AI as well. Yeah. So the, the, the key point in that particular conference is, is, is adoption of new technology, whether it's good or bad, and how we could forward, is a form of mindset. It's a form of mindset, and we talk about change management, and everything. it's about mindset. If you can't change the mindset, or if you are not open enough to be able to try something new, you will always be there. You will always be there. And human evolution over the last you know, thousands of years is basically we have that particular um, group of people that have an open mindset, and that is what science is about. Have that open mindset to be able to try new things and not to fear about failure and that we can move forward. I think that is important things. Um, and part and partial of convincing the older generation is leveraging example, you know, demonstrating that it has some values, etc. etc. But you know, it, it has to say that you have to be able to change the mindset. Okay. And I think probably with that we have uh, a, a, a good enough discussion. I hope you guys enjoy all the speakers here. And thank you, Connie. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to invite all members to the front, and then we will take a good photo together uh, with all the speakers and our moderator. <laughs> and with